NBA analysts have pegged the New York Knicks as contenders in the 2024-25 season, and also they have mentioned various players who can potentially win season awards on the New York Knicks, along with Coach Tom Thibodeau, who they believe can be the coach of the year, and we have to break all this down. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here. And in a recent poll from NBA analysts, they clearly are big fans of what the New York Knicks did this offseason, and they believe the Knicks are going to be one of the best teams in the NBA and have multiple award-worthy players players and an award worthy coach so we're gonna break that all down but before we get into that are you trying to kick a bad habit to the curb because if so then you have to check out fume have you heard that the flavored air category is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking it's a whole new movement towards better habits led by the sponsor of today's video fume fume has a lot of delicious flavors to choose from from crisp mint to cinnamon hearts they have a flavor just for you, and with flavored air, you can satisfy your oral fixation through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, no vapor, and no combustion. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be their next success story. So guys, for a limited time only, use our code DIGEST to get a free topper. It's the perfect accessory to your Fume device. Slip it onto the mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's chewable for those who love to fidget, and it's also reusable. So guys, head to tryfume.com. That is try, T-R-Y, F-U-M dot com. And use code DIGEST or scan this QR code right here to get your free fume topper when you order your journey pack today. So once again, that is tryfume, tryfum.com. Use code DIGEST, free topper. It's a can't miss situation. But let's get into the video. Okay, now let's jump into the video and discuss a lot of different guys who can win awards with the New York Knicks this season. And I am super thrilled to see the hype around some of these players and the New York Knicks as a whole. Starting off with Defensive Player of the Year, a lot of votes went to Mikhail Bridges as he is now fifth, according to ESPN analysts, in Defensive Player of the Year. He is the highest perimeter defender on the list. Victor Wembanyama got the majority of the votes, and I will say I do think Wemby is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Rudy Gobert will always be in there. Bam and Anthony Davis, it's the same deal. They'll always be in there. But Mikhail, higher than guys such as Drew Holiday, Joel Embiid, and Draymond Green, along with Giannis, who won Defensive Player of the Year once upon a time. And OG Ananobi is also on that list, which you just love it. You love to see the New York Knicks getting the respect they deserve. Now, I will say, I don't think OG's going to win it. I just don't see him playing 65 games, unfortunately. I do think he'll play around 60, but he's... Struggled to stay healthy. Over 65 games is something that OG has not done very often. So it's hard to really bet on that. Though I love that they do get the respect they deserve as two of the best, if not the best, on-ball defenders in the league. Also, Herb Jones should just be on this list. I think he's the best perimeter defender in the NBA. But hey, it is what it is. I won't complain with seeing my Knicks on there. And with six man of the year, some people do believe in Josh Hart. He got a few votes. And I think what's curious is that Dante DiVincenzo is not on this list. If you ask me, I think Dante is going to be more of the sixth man than Josh Hart. And I could absolutely be wrong because there is a world where Julius is the first guy to come off the court. And in that case, yeah, I feel like they'd probably sub in Josh Hart just for a physicality purpose. Kind of slide OG to the four and have Mikhail at the three or Mikhail at the two. It doesn't matter. The wing and the forward are basically all the same position nowadays anyway. But they'd sub Josh Hart in for Julius Randle. You understand what I'm saying. So, yeah, I think Josh Hart will definitely get some of the respect he deserves. Though I don't see him winning sixth man of the year. He's always better in the playoffs anyway. Josh Hart, known for that. So... I am curious to see what's going to happen. I love, again, the Knicks are getting respect. They have one of the best benches in the NBA. And I do think some of these analysts are thrown off by the amount that Tibbs played his starters in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, half those guys weren't even starters. They're just forced into big minutes. For instance, Josh Hart and also Precious Achua because all of their starters were already injured. So I think that's kind of hurting Josh Hart a little bit there. The Knicks are going to use their bench a good amount. Tom Thibodeau does not keep any of his top players in top 10 minutes per game. We saw that this season with the New York Knicks. He's definitely evolved as a coach. 
which is why he is favored to win coach of the year by NBA analysts. I love this pick. Obviously, I'm biased towards the Knicks, but I do think the Knicks will be a two or a three seed. And if that happens, I think Tibbs is a very good shot at coach of the year. Maybe Missoula could win it. Maybe Diagonal can just win it again because I... It wouldn't be surprising at all to see the, th the Thunder as the first seed. It'd be kind of surprising if they weren't. It's either them or the Timberwolves, I feel like. Greg Popovich back in there, the greatest coach of all time. And then guys like Kenny Atkinson, who I don't see winning it because I think the Cavs are not that good. Nick Nurse, who absolutely could win it with the 76ers. The 76ers, in my opinion, will be the two seed. But we're going to get into that in just a moment. Now, also on top of this, there was a little bit of a discussion around Tibbs. And here's what the analysts had to say. With another Nova Nick added to the roster, the hopes are high for New York. Tom Thibodeau is once again at the helm for the Knicks and voted the most likely to take home the coach of the year by our summer forecast panel. The award would be his third after winning it with the Bulls in 2011 and the Knicks in 2021. I'll just say, I didn't think Tibbs deserved it in 2021. I thought it should have went to Monty Williams. However, this year, I think Tibbs did deserve it. The amount of injuries that the Knicks had, they had no business being the second seed, yet they were anyway. I thought Tibbs should have won it this year, though Mark Diagonal, also a great pick. The Thunder were not supposed to be as good as they were, though I did say they were going to be a top four seed at the beginning of last year, but that's whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, shout out Bryson Atkins and Thunder Digest. But um, at the same time, I just, I think last year Tibbs probably should have won it or at least should have been in the top three and he wasn't, which was kind of a disgrace. I think that Tibbs can absolutely win this award. This team is built for Tom Thibodeau. It has an elite scoring point guard, a great forward. You got two elite defenders on the perimeter and an elite rim protector in Mitchell Robinson, along with a phenomenal bench featuring Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo, two Tibbs guys, McBride's a Tibbs guy. Precious can easily become one. Jericho Sims working hard. I think that Tibbs is a very good shot to win coach of the year. I'd love to see that happen for him. Dude is married to the game. Also, it was just cool to see him on the roommates podcast with Bronson and Hart. And you kind of get to see Tibbs as the person because it feels like he's always just so locked in and being a coach, which is what all the Knicks players have said. But it is something that I do really enjoy, and I will be rooting for Tibbs, absolutely. The man has shocked so many people with this revival of the Knicks. He's been a huge part of it. Many people didn't think it would work. I was one included. I just didn't think Tibbs was that good of a coach. I was so, so, so wrong. The man is coaching the best basketball he's ever coached before. He's way better than Timberwolves Tibbs, and I think he's better than Bulls Tibbs also. Given he was a good coach in Chicago... But what he's done in New York, the way he's adapted to the evolution of basketball, it's shown a lot about who Tibbs is and how much he loves the game and how much he wants to be a coach. This was a guy, when he didn't have a coaching job in the NBA, was going to all of his coaching friends, whether it was NBA teams, college teams, overseas teams, high school teams. Tibbs was trying to learn from everyone to adapt, and he absolutely did. Shout out to Tom Thibodeau. You deserve another coach of the year. You deserve to be one of the few coaches with three coach of the year awards. I'm a huge fan of Tibbs now. He's completely flipped the script for me. But we're not done. We got one more to talk about, which is the fact that the contenders in the Eastern Conference, according to analysts, are listed as the Boston Celtics, who are favored to be the first seed. I imagine they will be at 61-21. and 21. That seems like it makes sense. So I do think the Celtics are going to have a bit of championship hangover. The Knicks are second. I do think the 76ers will be second and then flame out earlier in the playoffs than expected because, well, that's what Joel Embiid does. Um, obviously, they're tied, though, so it would be some sort of tiebreaker. Unless, nope, I just can't read. It's The Knicks have one more win. That could go either way, honestly. Like, shout out to the 76ers. They had a phenomenal offseason, but at the same time, Embiid can't make the conference finals. L. Um, I had to do it. I'm, I'm a hater. Sorry, Sean Bernard. Shout out Sixers Digest for real. I just don't think the Cavs are a four seed also. I think the Bucks are better than them. I think the Bucks are being slept on a little bit, even though I think their window's closed. Dame's too old. Or no, he's not too old, but he's too injury prone now. Chris Milton's too injury prone. Giannis can't carry this team. They're aging out. I think this is Giannis's last year with the Bucks, in fact. And then the Orlando Magic, who I think are also just better than the Cavs. I think, I would guess that it goes Boston, Philly, Knicks, Bucks, Magic, Cavs, but you know what? These NBA analysts have a different opinion, and that's what's great about having opinions in sports. It does kind of get fun, and they did kind of speak on this a little bit, and there is a good discussion about how the Sixers could absolutely just take this spot. As I mentioned, the Knicks and the 76ers are neck and neck in our predictive standings at number two and number three, respectively, with a budding tri-state rivalry after an exciting six-game first-round playoff series. Had that one go, even when the Knicks were missing an all-star. The Nova Knicks will rally behind breakout point guard Jalen Bronson and recently re-signed OG, while the 76ers are hoping their superstar trio of Paul George, Joel Embiid, and Tyrese Maxey, so the one superstar and their two all-stars, given Tyrese Maxey's very underrated, can push Philadelphia to the finals. I will never believe in Philadelphia. I don't think Embiid can stay healthy for that long, especially after playing 
in the Olympics. I think it's going to be too much. I think he's going to burn out. I think he's going to get injured. I don't trust Paul George's health or Paul George's ability to play basketball in the playoffs. Tyrese Maxey, maybe the most underrated all-star in the NBA today outside of John Morant, just because we all forgot since he didn't really play last season, except for those five games where he looked like John Morant. So guys, that, th- those are my thoughts on the ESPN analyst stuff. Let me know what you guys think down below. This is kind of a weird video. I don't do stuff like this that often. Let me know if you like this. And if you did, leave a like, leave a comment either way. Give me some feedback. Make sure to subscribe to Nick's Digest. It means the absolute world to me. I will have a live stream tomorrow. I wish I could do a Saturday one, but I am going to be at the Jersey Shore. So maybe I'll hop on my phone and do one for like 45 minutes when I'm in my friend's backyard, probably drinking a White Claw, honestly, or something. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments down below. Have a great day, and go Knicks, baby.